All right. Good afternoon, traders. Uh, thanks for joining and taking your time to check out this week's trading webinar. Uh, right off the bat, as always, quick test of audio and visual. If you can hear my voice and see this opening slide, go ahead and type a Y in the chat. Okay, awesome. Uh, okay, be sure to use that chat box to ask any questions uh, throughout the webinar, and we will get to those uh, mainly after the presentation. So most of you should be familiar with my voice by now, uh, but for any first-time viewers, my name is Ty. I'm coming at you guys from Charlotte, North Carolina, and I handle the business development here at Shark Indicators. I've been involved in the trading industry for several years now, and we as a company have been involved in the NinjaTrader ecosystem since 2011. Now, on that note, before I pass it off, let's take a quick look at the risk disclosure. Take a minute and look this over. Futures, foreign currency, and options trading contains substantial risk and is not for every investor. And just to answer the question that I know is coming, uh, this live webinar is being recorded. So just look for an email from Ty at Shark Indicators, and I will get the recording out to you guys by tomorrow morning at the latest. Now, I know a lot of you are already familiar with Phil Antonsen uh, from Lucrum Trading Systems. And for those of you who are not, I'll have Phil introduce himself here shortly. So give your attention to him. He's going to show you uh, what you all came here to see today. So at this point, Phil, I'm going to promote you to presenter so you can introduce yourself to some of the shark audience here. And then you can get right into it, my friend. All right. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for joining me here today. My name is Phil Antonson with Lucum Trading Systems. A special thank you to Ty and those at Shark Indicators for hosting this presentation for me. So before I begin, let's just do a quick overview of what we will cover today. First, we'll do a snapshot of the Lucum Ruby Trading System and go over some of its key features and functions. Then we'll look at some of the usable outputs of Ruby using Shark Indicators Bloodhound software. Using those outputs, we will then build a basic strategy using both Bloodhound and the outputs of Ruby. Then we will take that and integrate it into a Bloodhound-driven logic engine or strategy, and then power it with Blackbird to do some testing and backtesting. And then at the very end of this presentation, I will do a random raffle drawing for a free lifetime license of the Ruby system. So stick around towards the end of the presentation and you will be automatically qualified to win that through a random draw of the audience. A little bit about Lucrum Trading Systems. Lucrum is a provider of both discretionary and automatic trading tools for NinjaTrader 7 and 8, as well as a trading education and system development consulting company. We are objectively oriented to providing our customers with the resources and tools necessary to empower profitable trading. And a little bit about me, I am a trader of over 10 years. I was a hedge fund analyst and trader specializing in the metals and energy sectors. I went to the University of Wisconsin for finance and economics. I'm the founder of Primario Capital Asset Management Company, and I currently reside in Atlanta, Georgia. So today we'll be covering uh, a lot of the Ruby system, a quick introduction to it. So here's a quick overview of what the system actually is. Ruby is a visually oriented trading aid, which allows you to quickly and easily identify trading opportunities by systematically analyzing price momentum, breakout ranges, and deviations in price. This toolbox of trading resources provides visual cues as to when trading opportunities present themselves. In the next few slides, we're gonna go over some of the key components of Ruby. So I just give you a visual sense as to what you get in this visual based system. First off, this is about as basic of a Ruby chart as you can get. And here is a showcase of the color-coded bars. The color-coded bars are a momentum-driven color coding system that systematically analyzes where the momentum and price is going through trends and other breakout metrics. The, uh, the colors of the bars do not repaint. So what you see in a chart like this or any historical chart that you may load will look identical to how the chart would build in real time. So you have both the violet for downtrending and green for uptrending markets with the intermediary bars, the gray bars that separate them to signify when there is a loss of momentum and you might be heading into a reversal of trend or perhaps even sideways momentum in the future. 
now we're going to take a look at the key trade trigger signals. These are the directional arrows that you'll see scattered throughout the chart, both the green, red, and yellow. The green is when the system looks at the data and says, okay, there's a strong likelihood of a continuation in this direction. So as soon as it sees that, it will post this little triangle marker indicating that there's a strong likelihood that there is going to be that continuation. So you have both the green as an indication of a, an expected upward trend, and we have the reds for an expected downward trend. And you may notice in the middle here, we've got the yellow guys here, and these are the extended trade signals. And the extended trade signals, what they're for is when the system says, okay, there are conditions that have been met that would suggest that there is a continuation for price to move in that direction, but because the price has already moved so much in favor of the initial signal, it could also have indications for being uh, signs of the momentum slowing down or there could be a reversal imminent. So those intermediary or extended trade signals can be used for something like a take profit, um, or you can also scale in or out of positions accordingly, depending on how you might have your system designed. Next, we're going to take a look at the color-coded EMA and MMA. The MMA, Modified Moving Average, is a linear regression moving average, which is, a, in my experience, a much faster and responsive moving average in comparison to the standard exponential or the simple moving averages. So the linear regression, uh, the period can be changed. This is uh, default on the start here, but you can adjust it to whatever you see fit but it tends to follow price very quickly. So it's not a very lagging indicator when you're working with uh, crossover or even using support and resistance levels through any type of uh, moving average charting. Then we also have the color-coded EMA, the exponential moving average. This is gonna be your basic um, slow moving exponential moving average. Here we have a 100 period moving average for this chart. Oh, this is a, a five tick vision right by the way, for, for these charts. Um, if you're curious. So the EMA here is a 100, 100 uh, period moving average and it also is colored based on the momentum of price. So you have both the teal, the yellow, and the red to indicate accordingly. Here we're going to move into, I believe these are 15 minute uh, examples. We got three examples of Ruby's pattern identification system. And the identification system uses um, pivot points that are based on the deviation of prices that form the ranges. And what the system does is it looks at the three or four most recent closed uh, ranges, and it looks to see if there is a pattern based on the difference in distance of price between them. So in these examples here, we have an ascending channel on the left. This is a bearish breakout um, you know, expected breakout to the lower side, as well as with the rising wedge similar in pattern, one forms a channel with the breakout range below it, with the rising wedge being more of a triangular pattern, also with a breakout range to the lower side, implied anyways. You know, it doesn't always happen like that, but that is the implied uh, breakout range for these types of technical formations. And this last example on the right, we have the falling wedge, which is the reverse of the rising wedge, is the falling triangle formation, that has the implied breakout range to the upside. And also with the pattern recognition using the, the pivot points, we have the Fibonacci extensions. These Fibonacci extensions paint off those closed pivot lines and project the key Fibonacci ratios forward through your chart. So another quick couple examples here of how that looks on a chart. So with the Fibonacci extensions, they are pretty important uh, for technical traders to find, you know, key levels of contention, uh, you know, breakout points, support and resistance, and the likes. And all of these Fibonacci extensions uh, can be read and utilized in Bloodhound, which we will actually utilize in the system that we build a little bit later on. And then here we have the Vision Renko bars. The Vision Renko bars are a custom Renko bar type, which are, you know, as you may know, with the Renko charting system, they're non-time denominational. 
basically wherever the price moves, it is going to form a bar at that size uh, that you determine. In this example here, we have a five tick bar size. And what makes the Vision Renko bar type a bit different than your traditional Renko charting is that they are highly accurate for both live and back-tested performances. And what I mean by that is they don't utilize hindsight bias and they don't operate under the, the pretense that pricing data is seamless. You know, oftentimes there will be gaps in price data and this makes sure to um, you know, adjust accordingly to that. And you'll notice that there's also a one tick offset for the formation of each, each uh, bar. And why that's important is because if you think about it, the standard Renko bar type that actually has a you know, seamless transition uh, price level between the formation, it uh, operates under the pretense that you can actually get in a trade at that exact level where the previous bar closes, which is not really possible. So the Vision Renko bar is uh, something that you can you know, have faith in when you're either live trading or using it in a back-tested scenario. So with Ruby, you can customize a lot of it, um, not only visually, here's just an example, I threw up some you know, random colors, they aren't the prettiest, but just to showcase, you know, if you operate uh, an indicator with a dark background, you can adjust it to uh, you know, fit your particular style. And with that, you can also adjust it to your trading style. So whether you are a long-term trend trader, if you're a short-term swing trader, uh, if you use Renko bars, range bars, volume bars, pretty much anything, you can really customize and tailor Ruby to fit your specific trading needs and objectives. So here we're just going to do a couple quick examples here. Here's a five-minute crew. This is uh, a couple days ago screenshot. Um, you know, it's important to note that there's no repainting in this. So every single time that you load up a historical chart with Ruby, you know, for any sort of analysis that you might be doing, you will have, um, you know, faith knowing that this is exactly how the chart would have looked had you been using it in real time. And here's an example of a 20 range NASDAQ also a couple days ago. Um, you know, again, pretty much all trading styles and markets that you're looking to trade, you can use components of Ruby or all of Ruby to really tailor it towards your specific trading needs and styles. So now we're going to jump into NinjaTrader and look at some of the accessible outputs that Ruby has and how they can be integrated with Shark Indicators Bloodhound. I'm just going to jump over to jump in here and just open up a, we'll do an e-mini continuous contract on a 15 minute, we'll just load up 30 days. So here we have the standard, you know, 15 minute chart here and we'll go ahead and load up Shark Indicators Bloodhound and LTS Ruby. And all of the parameters here will be the default ones for, for this example. So here you can see it on a chart, you know, this is not tailored specifically towards this market. Um, I generally like the 15 minute with default settings uh, for my discretionary trading, but you can really uh, you know, see what works for you in your particular trading styles. So now that we have a chart up here, let's go ahead and jump into Bloodhound by selecting the empty template at the top of the chart here. And we'll just load up the LTS Ruby template. Go ahead and refresh the chart here to make sure that we're up to date. And now we can take a look at some of the usable outputs that this template has. And if you are a current Ruby user or look to have Ruby in the future, this template will be included. It just sort of expedites, you know, how you can jump into Bloodhound and Ruby just by easily accessing these outputs to build some, some basic strategies. So first we're gonna go through and, and take a look at, you know, some of the simple ones. You've got bar direction up or down. This is more or less where the violet and the green bars are formed. It's going to have a value assigned to it in Bloodhound. So here we have that. Next we have the MMA direction. This is the linear regression moving average, uh, the fast moving average, 
that is associated with it. Similarly to the MMA slope, which is going to be offset slightly, the MMA direction will be a precursor to the slope because it's faster moving with these color changing, which might be a little bit tough to see because it's so thin, but you have the red and the teal here and the transitions between them. Next, we have the entry trade signals. These are going to be every solid uh, trade trigger signals that you have here. So here's a upward trending signal and here's a downward trending signal here. And they do not include the extended signals, the yellow ones, that you see one right here. That is a different one altogether. That would be the extended trade signal. Next, we have simply put, the EMA slope. This is the slow moving average here that we have. And we have the simple uh, average to range, the ATR, and this is whether or not price is above or below that stepped ATR. Here is the pivot reversal. The pivot reversal is so uh, imagine that you have price building and you have this pivot point forming. And when the formation of these pivot points occur, as the chart progresses, it will continually update to where that next uh, pivot point is based on the price deviation. So every single time there's a new formation. So here, when it closed, you would have a new formation here where this green line is. And when it closes here, you'll have a continuation where it continued to update here, here, and here. So kind of hard to explain, but uh, it's useful to knowing when there was actually price deviation in excess of the parameters that Ruby has. And here we have the uh, price comparison to the 50% Fibonacci. Uh, this one needs to be updated in real time so you can see where the 50% Fibonacci ratio is. And because price is below it, it will have a downward trending signal. And as the pivot points adjust and the Fibonacci extensions adjust as well, you will get this change. And if I refresh the chart completely, this is how it would operate. And last we have, I have a, a MACD crossover here in uh, the logic solvers. This is not part of Ruby, but this will be used in the logic for the uh, system that we're going to build. So with the logic, what I want to do is take a look at where the entry trade trigger signals are. And then we want to filter them by using where price is in relation to that 50% Fibonacci rate. So both of these conditions need to be met in order to place that initial signal. You know, it's a very simple, uh, very rudimentary logic, but it's something that is sound. You know, for that initial logic, when you're designing the system, you don't want to get too embedded into the details. You want a simple but sound logic and then build upon that. So that is what our basic logic is. It's stating, okay, we have the trade trigger signal here, and we want to make sure that it's in conjunction with that 50% Fibonacci uh, rate to make our entry. And for our exit, we're going to use a MACD exit. And the MACD, the Moving Average Convergence Divergence Indicator, is a great indicator that is included with basically every single um, trading chart in existence. So we're going to have our exit condition say, if there is a MACD crossover or there is an extended trade signal, as again, I mentioned in the example of the uh, extended trade signals that can be used to both scale in and out of, of a position. We're just going to use it to operate as a take profit. So either of these, this is not going to be an and logic node. This is simply an or logic node. So it's saying either the MACD crossover can occur or the extended trade signal can occur in order to make that exit. So simple enough. That's that's all we really want for our logic. The logic behind this thought of it in less than a half hour, and it took even less to build it. 
So that is really the power of the Bloodhound software is you can go from an idea to something that you can test in a matter of minutes instead of days working with a programmer or having the time to actually learn programming yourself, which is a whole nother can of soup. So we're gonna go ahead and take that logic and pop into the strategy analyzer here. And here we're going to use a E-mini continuous contract for simplicity's sake. And we're gonna run a quick back test using that logic using Blackbird. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into Shark Indicator's Blackbird selected from the, the drop down here. And we are going to click this little button here to go into the Blackbird settings. And here we're going to load up the template. So as you update the um, Bloodhound logic and solvers, it's going to automatically update the template. And we are going to select that template. And our entry is going to be July's webinar entry. And for the exit signal, we are going to do the MACD or extended trade trigger signal exit. And because the MACD, oops, because the MACD and the extended trade trigger signal is an all encompass all encompassing exit, we are not going to operate with any specific uh, profit targets or any specific stop losses. So we got that all set. Uh, we're going to operate with the 15 minute, the same one that we have in this chart. And we're just going to do a quick back test from January 1st of this year up into uh, almost today's date. And we're just going to run the back test and see how it does. I'll switch to currency, it's a little bit easier to tell. Um, decent, I mean, it's profitable, but you know, that's really only a small fraction of what makes a good automated system. So as you can notice here, the uh, the percent profitable, not that great, um, you know, because it's such a simple logic, there's no filtering, there's no uh, time of day filtering, there's no greater trend filtering. It's pretty basic and it takes every single signal that it gets and it exits on a MACD, which is also by default. So it's pretty quick, understandable that the uh, percent of profitable is not that high, but I think that we can improve it. The average trade, decent, you know, it's enough to cover some slippage and commission costs. And the average winning trade is 2.29, little over double the losing trades. Let's take a look on a chart and pop up the logic. So we've got our July webinar entry and we can see that signal was made and it enters the trade at the very open of the very next bar and operates as such. So we can go through and take a look and, and just sort of see what exactly is going on with it and how we might be able to improve it. So here, when we look at the percent profitable being such a low number, and we see stuff like this where there's a lot of sideways movement and the system really has a hard time discerning you know, whether or not the momentum is gonna continue. That's what's keeping the, the losers small, but it also is why there's a low profitability. So I think that we can use some filtering methods here with changing the Ruby quick. loading a bit of data there we go so we're looking at this and we say okay we've got I'll put up the MACD as well just to give you a full look at as to what's happening um, so you know over seven months of data so it takes a little bit each time but that's all right so here we're looking at the exit conditions are rapidly hit because the MACD is so close together all these crossovers that occur it kicks us out pretty quick and it re-enters the trade, which again, just more consecutive losing. So that's not really ideal. And the, the uh, Ruby is a little bit too fast acting for the 15 minute. So we can go ahead and, and try adjusting the trade trigger sensitivity and the trend sensitivity to try and filter those out 
and smooth it a little bit to have larger winners um, and boost that that uh, win ratio confidence a little bit. So I think for this we'll we'll end up cranking up the the trade trigger sensitivity and the trend sensitivity a little bit. And what that's going to do is it's going to smooth out. Here I can let's do uh, like 30, 30. And it will end up really hard to see here because of the um, tightness of it and all the text. But what this actually did is it, it smoothed out the consistency of, of, the, uh, of the chart. So let's just jump back into our chart here and take a look at the logic again. So start with the entry and what we can do for one is adjust the sensitivity of, of Ruby that adjusts where the trade trigger signals are being placed. So let's just do, we did 30, let's do it more relative, just boost up a little bit, smooth everything out a little bit, have a little bit uh, less frequent uh, trades being triggered. Uh, Fibonacci, you know, I haven't really tried to adjust this. Um, I did 50% because this is an equally weighted strategy with long and short. If you wanted to operate with a long only strategy or differentiate long strategy from short strategy, you know, could adjust the Fibonacci uh, percentage to be a little bit different. So here's, you know, all the different listed key Fibonacci percentages, and we'll just stick with the 50% for now for this example. And then we're gonna filter out some more trades by using the EMA slope. And the EMA slope is essentially going to say, okay, there's a long-term trend in this particular direction. And by applying that EMA slope filter, we are going to take out a good portion of them. And then next, we can take a look at the uh, MACD exit. And like I said, I think the MACD moved a little bit too fast, so I don't think it was able to capture the full breadth of some of these runs. So we can just try and adjust let's do about 13 and 13. Here. So while I'm changing these numbers and not changing them on the chart itself, it is important to realize that when you're working with all these solvers and they might not align up correctly, so you have the extended trade trigger signals applied here, just turn this off. You know, you can see that these ones are no longer highlighted is because I am adjusting all well, these extended, excuse me, the entry trade signals. They are skewed. And the reason they're skewed from where they are is because I have adjusted their values within Bloodhound. So at any time that you're operating with uh, any indicators on your chart and you're like, okay, this is kind of confusing. Why is why are my signals not aligning with what they're supposed to be doing? Uh, the key thing to look at is to make sure that your parameter values are identical to uh, what you're working with in Bloodhound. All right, so I think that was the changes we wanted to have done. We added an EMA slope. We smoothed out Ruby, didn't change the Fibonacci, and for the exit, um, slow down the moving average or the, the MACD crossover a little bit to have it less um, sporadic or often in some of those more sideways times. And we didn't do anything to the extended signals. So now it was just to retest. So you, you can kind of go back and forth, try some different filtering techniques and see how it affects the system by going back to the historicals and doing the, the analysis from that. So we go ahead, back into Blackbird. Uh, everything was saved. I had it saved as, as default. So we've got January 1st uh, into this week. And we're going to run the back test again. All right, so the results were favorable. Um, the profit factor has gone up uh, by a good factor. The overall net profit didn't really trade, but that's understandable because 
we have eliminated a lot of the trades through the filtering techniques by having a um, less less trade signals generated from Ruby cut it down and having the filtering technique of the EMA has also cut it down considerably. So the number of trades is, um, I think it was about, about half as many. The percent profitable has gone up, uh, I think about 8% to near 40, which is just fine because our average ratio of winners to losers has also increased into an average trade of 121. So I almost, I almost doubled it. Um, you know, obviously it's not something that, oh, great, this performs so well. I'm going to go ahead and run it. Absolutely not. You know, that's that's just more or less a method to rapidly test different ideas and to go back and see if your logic is sound. So then the next stage is to test its robustness by, you know, doing some, uh, you know, key back test analysis, um, which is sort of a whole nother uh, step to the, the automated system development process, but it's a good starting point. All right, so let's just go into uh, all right, just checking to see if there's some questions here. Um, I'll do questions at the end, which is coming up pretty soon. I actually rushed through this a little bit quicker than I expected, but you know, got the information out there so you guys can can do more with your day, I guess. So that is uh, the quick example of how you can build a a simple strategy using the logic that you create in a matter of uh, you know quick charting analysis. And with Bloodhound, you can quickly and simply do it and test it right away with the help of Blackbird. So with Ruby, what do you get with it? You get the Ruby system for both NinjaTrader 7 and 8. Um, if you are an existing Ruby user, I have released the version for NinjaTrader 8 a few months back. So if you did not get that, feel free to shoot me an email and I'll get that out to you. Um, this also includes the Vision Renko bar type. Um, it's sold separately if you don't want Ruby, but you just want the bar type. That is uh, 195 on my website. It also includes a comprehensive use and trading manual uh, that will cover all of an explanation of all of the different parameters of Ruby. Um, I didn't go into the parameters in much detail in this webinar, um, but I think there are some historical ones that you can find that that goes into the uh, different components of, of Ruby in more detail. Uh, with that, we have free updates. Uh, there's not going to be really many updates to the core components of Ruby. The, the engine, the logic behind the algorithms that Ruby operates on are sound and have been used for years. So those will not change. The only updates that really will occur is if there are major changes to NinjaTrader 7 or 8. Um, you know, obviously the transition from 7 to 8, there was an update for the 8. Um, as well as if you have requests for some quality of life changes, um, say there's a feature that you really wish it had, you know, you can request it. And, you know, if I feel it's a good fit for it, I can incorporate that and push that through a future update. Also includes free support. Um, if you have any questions, you're having difficulty with any components of it, you know, I'm, I'm always available through a uh, phone or email to help you out with, with some requests. Uh, also for the webinar attendees, you get uh, one hour of free setup and consulting. Uh, basically what that means is you will explain to me what your trading style is, which markets you like to trade, what time of day you like trading, and I can go ahead and give you some starting points, uh, you know, some parameters that you can use with Ruby to help you out initially, um, although I, I always feel the best method is to try a lot of different parameters and settings and, and stuff yourself and find out what, which works best for you. And last, you'll also receive uh, this webinar's Bloodhound and Blackbird template. And all of that is $3.95 for a lifetime license. And if you are in the market for either Bloodhound or Blackbird, you can actually combine with Ruby to save some cash. 
So we have some offers by following the link either in this, this footer or here. Um, if I can get uh, Ty to post that in the chat that you guys can click on, that's lucrumtradingsystems.com forward slash all lowercase bloodhoundwebinar.php. Uh, so with that, you can get both Ruby and Blackbird uh, for for uh, a three hundred dollars savings. So it's essentially if you're looking at Blackbird and you're like, hmm, I think I want it, you can essentially get Blackbird and get Ruby for free. And with Bloodhound, the savings are a little bit smaller, but still pretty significant, over hundred bucks. Now I'm sure why everybody is still sticking around is the random draw for the winner. Uh, and if you currently are a Ruby user, I can either give you a additional license. Um, otherwise, um, you know, there's no cash value. <laughs> so what we're going to do with that is I've got a random number generator and I've got a list of all of the attendees. Uh, so we've got 57 in attendance. And I am just going to click generate 47. So I'm going to go 10 back from the top. One, two, three, four, or from the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So Terry Kunath, uh, if you're here with me, congratulations. Please go ahead and either ask a question in uh, GoToMeeting or GoToWebinar or send me an email. Uh, my contact information will be here in a little bit. So congratulations to you. So right now we're gonna go into the questions segment. Uh, this is, you know, I'll go through, I see there are some questions have popped up in the, uh, the webinar here, so let me that out so I apologize if I missed it during the, the presentation but I will go through them now um, if nobody has any questions I would like to prematurely say thank you for joining me um, for those that have some questions stick around and I will be answering them uh, for people that are current own owner of Ruby uh, like I said if you're looking for the uh, the NinjaTrader 8 version go ahead and send me an email I can get that out to you. And yes, it will also include the Vision Rank of R type included with the uh, NinjaTrader 8 version. Uh, Steven, when I plug in the, the different uh, function nodes like the AND or OR logics, um, it does not matter which order they are for a case like this. It simply will look at um, whichever one occurs at that time. Um, so that's that's uh, not important for that. Um, how would it perform if you were to test only between 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. Eastern time? Uh, I think the average holding period for that strategy was was a lot longer than than something that would um, be within uh, two and a half hours. So I don't think you would get the full breadth of how the system operates, um, but you can certainly put in some logic solvers uh, to limit when the system actually trades. So it's something worth exploring uh, with that. Uh, you also asked, does it work with any type of bars? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, whether you're using range, Renko, volume, minute, um, you know, Ruby will work fine with that, depending on how you have your system design, discretionary automatic trading. Um, you know, there'll be some changes, but you know, for the most part, it will be the same. Uh, I already own Ruby and Bloodhound Blackbird. Can you send me the uh, template from today's webinar. Uh, absolutely, Heinz. Uh, please send me an email and I will go ahead and get that out to you. Uh, Bloodhound does have uh, a Raven, which is a component for back testing. Uh, it doesn't really provide the robustness that Blackbird does and the, the sheer simplicity. Um, there's also a lot of features of Blackbird that I did not cover in this webinar. I use basically, I scratched the surface as to how you can use Blackbird. And for more detail onto why there's value in, in Blackbird, I, I highly suggest checking out some of the archived webinars uh, that Shark Indicators puts on.
or how does Ruby's Renko bar type differ from Shark Indicator's Renko bar type? Uh, they're very, very, very similar. I think the difference is the offset between them. Um, but I know that that Shark Indicators have done their homework to make sure that their bar type is accurate and functions uh, for backtesting as well. Uh, Bennett, thank you very much for the purchase. Uh, how do I get it? Um, what I will do, I will receive your order and I will send you an email requesting your machine ID uh, and then I will go ahead and activate your license and send you the necessary files for you to download and then you will import it as you would uh, any other indicator. Uh, is the webinar recorded and when is the link available? Uh, as Ty mentioned earlier on in this presentation, uh, he said that you would get it, I believe, by no later than tomorrow, tomorrow morning-ish. Um, so I would assume just uh, absolutely by, by the weekend. All right, um, any last minute straggler for questions come in? Uh, can the FIBs be easily back tested? Yeah, absolutely. That was the uh, example that I did. Uh, for this was a price comparison between the Fibonacci's. Uh, so here we have, um, you know, you can use price comparisons, but essentially you have all of the different Fibonacci ranges here that you can use um, as well as here's pretty much all the different plots and data series uh, that you can use at your discretion with Ruby and Bloodhound. Oops. All right, so if I missed anybody's questions, uh, I apologize uh, for that, but I think I got everybody. Uh, if there's anything that I missed, please feel free to send me an email and I will be sure to answer any specific questions that you have. Uh, thank you all very much for joining me. Again, thank you very much to Ty and Shark Indicators for putting on this presentation for me. I very much appreciate it. Uh, enjoy the rest of the, your day, everybody, and uh, have a great upcoming weekend. Thank you very much. Awesome, Phil. Hey, thanks again for presenting today, man. Uh, very informative, uh, straight to the point, just the kind of stuff the Shark audience enjoys. So like Phil said, if you guys have uh, any other questions uh, for Phil, you can send them to phil at lucrumtradingsystems.com. Um, any questions specifically for Shark Indicators, you can send to support at sharkindicators.com. And uh, if you tuned in late, uh, this is being recorded. Uh, like Phil said, we'll send the link out tomorrow morning at the latest. So just look for an email uh, from Ty at sharkindicators.com. So thank you again, Phil, and thank you, traders. And everyone have a great night and uh, an awesome weekend.